Welcome to this tutorial in which we will be doing a little animation uh, or rather an animation montage for interaction. It will be a fairly short tutorial since this is a pretty easy thing to do. Easy thing to do, but let's just jump into it and see what we're going to be creating today. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is the very simple animation state that we're going to be creating today. Uh, we have this character from the Windwalker demo and we're just gonna walk up to a wall. And this wall here is an interactable object which allows us to interact with it. So by pressing our interact key, the character will do an interaction. It will stay in this looping uh, interaction animation until we are done by pressing E again and it will resume the idle posture that it had before. And if we walk around and nothing else is nearby and we press our interaction key, nothing is happening. So that's what we will be creating today. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.27. We are currently in the project for Windwalker Echo. This is the project that was released in relation with the, uh, the Slay animation uh, recently, at this point in time at least of the recording. Uh, so this project is available for download via the Epic Marketplace. Um, and essentially we're just going to be using this for our little interaction animation. So let's start. What we're going to be doing is uh, first off uh, an animation that we can make use of when we're interacting. So to do this we'll go to our animation folder here for Echo. And we can go and find this reach out start here for example. And we can right click and we can create an anime montage from this. The default name is fine for us, and uh, we'll open that one up. And this is what we will be presented with, or actually not probably this, you'll probably have something looking like this. Uh, anyway, so this is our animation that we start off with. We want to add some more animations to this, so we'll add the reach out loop. We'll drag that in here and we'll drop it up here. Let's try that one more time. And so, and we drop it here. Then we'll get the reach out end also, and we'll drop it in the animation over here, like so. So now you can see that all of these animations have been added to the montage. So if we were to play this, it would be uh, going through looking like this. So we have a start, we have a loop that's just endlessly looping. So for however long you want this to play, and then you have a reach out end here, which is when it goes back to an idle state. So what we'll do is we will uh, first off uh, right click here on the um, uh, montage group and we'll create a new montage section. We we'll call this one uh, loop, just simple, straightforward. We'll make sure to drag it so it's just starting where the loop animation starts. We'll add another montage section in the end. We can call it end and we'll do the same here to make sure that it starts when that one starts. We'll go to the first one and we'll rename this to start. So now we have three sections, a start, a loop and an end. How can we make use of this? Well, if we open up our blueprint for Echo, we go to our event graph. Uh, let's create an event here. So let's say uh, keyboard e. Usually the key that is used for interaction, right? So we'll add this and we will say play montage. This is what we're presented with. We can now choose a montage, we only have one, so this is what will be appearing here. In addition to that, we can also assign a start section name, and this is the montage section that we have already uh, named. So we can type in start here. And we can also copy paste this, and we can say that we want to have the same, but we want to play the end. Then we will drag out the flip flop here, like so. And now let's go through what is actually happening here. So. What we have is flip-flop, so the first time we press E, the flip-flop is going to go through here and going to play the anime montage that we created and play from the start section. Then the next time we press E, it's going to play from the end section. And this is essentially everything we need for a very simple an animation of interaction. So we can compile and save. Let's go back to our animation now. What we need to fix here is we want to have the start animation to play out uh, like it is. Let's see if I can let's press this so we can go like so. So we want to go along the start animation like so. We want to start it and we want to end in the loop and we want to continuously loop the loop until we're done 
And then at some point when we're done and we want to stop interacting, we want the end animation to play. How can we do this? Well, you can see we have a chain over here. It says that it starts from start, it goes to loop, and it goes to end. So that's what's happening if we play, play, if we play the start button right here. So you can see it passing through like I described. But we don't want that to happen. So we want to click over here on the arrow to end and we say remove link. Now that one is not going to be uh, playing anymore. So if we were to be over here, play, you can see that it will jump away to the start again. But that's also not what we want. We want to have it start and then loop continuously. So we can click over here and say loop. And now it will go to the start and it will loop on the loop. So, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to show. So here, now we're playing the animation, we're looping. And when it gets to the end of this loop animation, it's going to track back to the loop again. So it will stay like this continuously. Now, because of how we did here, we're saying that it should start from the start section. So it will go into the loop just like we have set up, but it will never leave the loop. So that's where this part comes in. So whenever we press E again, we will instead call the end section of this animation. And we can now check out what and see what that looks like. So here we are, have our character from that animation. We can walk around and when we press E, it will step forward, it will do an interact and it will continuously loop here now until we do something essentially. So when I press E again now, you can see that it backs off and it looks fluid and nice. And we can press E and quickly abort at any time we want and it will just blend in uh, fantastically with this setting like so. To make this just a tiny little bit more advanced, let's just make a very simple uh, blueprint. Uh, we'll go ahead to blueprint class. We'll create one of actor. We'll call it BP interactable. That's not how you spell interactable. Like so. And let's add a static mesh because that's what I like to do. That's not what I wanted to do. It doesn't really matter, but let's do a normal static mesh. Like so, and we'll add a static mesh that's a cube. We don't have one of those in here. Let's try. Okay, there. Oh, wait, I'm in materials. There we go. Uh, face board doesn't look good. Oh, sorry. Let's let's take this static mesh. It's not great, but it, it'll do. So this will be our interactable essentially. Uh, to make something really simple around this, we'll make a collision, a box collision. Like so, we'll make sure to scale it. That's not what I wanted to do either. Let's remove the box collision to be on the same level as the root. So it doesn't affect each other, it shouldn't have. I probably clicked something wrong there, uh, like so. So the box is being um, scaled now and not the actual mesh. Something like that. Uh, we'll scale it a little bit further. There we have, this is our collision, which allows us to uh, interact with it then, let's say. Let's add a little bit a blueprint interface just to make this uh, really clean. So uh, BPI interact, uh, like so. And we'll go into our interactable. We'll add this uh, interface here. And the only reason that we're adding this interface here is to show that we are actually near something that's interactable right now. So we can go to our blueprint for our character again, and we can say uh, overlapped. Isn't that the one? Let's right click and go overlapped. Get. Is it context sensitive? It's overlapping maybe. Yeah, it's overlapping. Okay, so get uh, overlapping actors. And doing this, we can loop through this quickly. Uh, not get loop, I want to remove that context like so. So now we're gonna loop through all the different objects that are overlapping us right now. And we can say that if one of these has a implementing an interface, and we can type in our interface that we did here, interactable. This will make sure that only if we have, we're standing next to something interactable, this part will fire off essentially. And to do that, we'll clean up and give us a little bit more space. 
So the interface is essentially just working as sort of a validation for us right now that we can actually interact at all. And that should be it. So if we bring this blueprint into the world like so. So now if I walk around here and I press E, nothing is happening. But when I walk up to this wall and now I'm likely inside of the volume, then I press E, it will go into the interaction, it will loop there and do everything and then we can abort it. And that's essentially what we wanted to create today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.